for staying with us, still on the issue of the economy. On this segment, we would be speaking on our tax system in the country. Tax administration in Nigeria is vested in the three tiers of government. Taxes payable to the federal government are administered by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, while those payable to the state government are administered by the state boards of internal revenues. Local governments are also administrators and they administer both uh, rates and levies collectible by them through their various councils. What they have noted, however, are the taxes payable by persons doing business in Nigeria, which include the company income tax, personal income tax, capital gains tax, value-added tax, education tax, technology tax, stamp duties, and withholding tax. To speak on the issue of taxation in Nigeria with me in the studio right now is Timmy Tokwe Kolade. He's the manager of oil, gas, and power group at Anderson Tax. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Now, the situation around the tax system and tax payment as well in Nigeria. How well would you say that those in which we have given this power to manage our taxes, how well would you say they have done in this regard? Well, if you're asking to start with, uh, if you're asking the question of how they've done with our taxes, that means we're just asking the government because it's not just about the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to realize that uh, taxes has been even before the colonial eras, I mean, pre-colonial eras, for example, you will remember that in 1940s we had the Abeokuta Women Union uh, protesting about increment in tax and how those, uh, the, the taxes would probably not be used in their favor. And of course, they also protested about collection of information census specifically and how they would use that to capture them for tax purposes. Uh, well. After independence in 1961, the personal income tax came into being, same with the company's income tax. So there is that realization that we need a tax, and tax has been both before colonial and uh, post-colonial. Post However, between the 1960s and the 1970s, you find that uh, so much of the revenue in Nigeria was from agricultural products, and the marketing boards were used to collect taxes from the farmers then, because it was difficult to collect the income tax from them. But by the time uh, the oil boom came in the 1974, 73, 74, uh, it, it was much more about oil revenue. How much is it contributing? And as you see from 1970s to 1980s, the old trajectory changed from between 26% uh, from oil collection, I mean, the revenue altogether to about 80%, 70%, 80% that we then started accounting for from oil. And non-oil also knows dived mm -hmm. from about 73% down to the 20%, the 19%, 18%. So it tells us that not so much has happened with taxes thereafter because there was so much reliance on oil. oil. And by, by the uh, 2015, 2016, we then at that recession hit us so badly that we then knew that there was so much of uh, a downslide of oil price and it's, it, was, it then became necessary that we then focus on tax collection. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we can't really be judging the FRS. What we should, uh, the people that we should assess are the government. And of course, the population has been increasing over and over again. Over the years. Yeah, so uh, it, it will be hard. And if you're going to assess how tax money has been spent, it's basically to see our infrastructure facilities, to see what we see around us, how much uh, can we see that is different from what it has been. Uh, you would find that mo most of the infrastructure work that's been done in Nigeria were even done during the uh, military era. We're not seeing much these days because you see most of our revenue go into recurrent expenditure. expenditure. So if you if then ask what exactly is tax money being used for and how well have they used it, uh, it would be a case of how well have workers been paid. For example, you step back and say, why are we talking about an increase in VAT rates? from 5% to 7.5%. And some people have said it's because there is going to be an increase in minimum wage and we need to meet that demand. So it's, it's all together. It's about how well. But does it add up? Because it looks like you're trying to make money 
you know, from increasing taxes to pay those, you know, for the minimum wage. But then, wouldn't they be taxed as well? Yeah, they would be taxed, and they will be taxed on consumption. In fact, uh, when you look at what happened in the 1990s, what the, the sort of amendments that we saw was more or, uh, more or less giving some sort of waivers to people on their income tax so that they would have more disposable income. income. And what that does is that when they then spend the money, VAT would then apply on what they buy. By 1993-1994, we had the, uh, the sales tax moving into a value-added tax system such that you could then collect from when people consume. So when you go to the supermarket, when you go to places to purchase, you end up spending the money, but at least you have the money to spend. And spending is what... Stimulating the economy. Yeah, spending it was actually stimulates the economy. But we've not had so much to spend. That's the real problem that we have. And if we, if we need to start asking that question, how well have they spent uh, the, the tax money so far, we will then need to talk about transparency in each of the governments over the years from the military government to when we started having democracy and from one uh, term to the other, from one tenure to the other, what have they done with the revenue taxes. altogether, mm -hmm. including taxes here? Yeah. Because I mean, I know that being a tax administrator, you know, your company for one is like the middleman between the taxpayers and the government. You know what those people are generating per time and then you see the infrastructure deficit that we're still going through in the country. At that time, when you're wondering, what exactly is happening? Not exactly, because if you then look at the budgets for the year, for example, and you see how much is expected to be collected from taxes, the budget gives you a clear picture of what the money is expected to be spent on, and oh. which is why we said, look at the recurrent expenditure, look at how much uh, you also spending. going to spend on capital expenditure. And then capital expenditure for now, and what the, gov what the current government has said is that they will get as much of the funding for, for, for capital expenditure from borrowing. So you find that what we are collecting is actually meant for recurrent expenditure to ensure that the ministries continue to run. Of course, we're funding the parliament, we're funding the executives, we're funding the judiciary. So that's so much about what is being used for. And uh, which is why I said the assessment is so much about transparency. Mm. Is the government open enough to say that this is how much we've collected this year, this is how much it was spent. We see what they will do, but sometimes we don't see what they have done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, now we, we have the issue where the FIRS led by uh, Fowler, you know, we have a point where he's saying that they will need to increase the tax net. What is the level of pressure now being put on the tax authorities? Well, I, I think the pressure is much uh, from an outsider's perspective. Um, I understand that virtually every month uh, the, the, the chairman has to appear at the Asso Villa to give account of what they are doing about taxes. You'll recall that sometimes they go to, a letter came from uh, one of the top officials in government asking Mr. Babatunde Fowler to come oh, and yes. explain what has happened over the years in terms of tax collection from 2015 till date. So I think that the pressure is there. The real question is whether there is enough willpower by the government because there are certain changes that we also expect in the law to ensure that collection is made easy. There are some other things that we also expect from the uh, administrator being the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Service. as well as the other states' uh, uh, revenue services. And you expect that they begin to digitize things. And that's what you see with the legal state government, for example, that tells you that you can now make payments online. Of course, you can do that with the Federal Inland Revenue Service as well. But again, the step that the, uh, the legal state government has taken for that the legal internal revenue services, that they've also said that they would connect your registration online on their portal with your uh, bank verification number, your BVN. Okay. And that makes a lot of sense in terms of when you want to then drag so many people in that, into that tax net. How much do you see with respect to having a platform that it's probably visible to an external party that they can verify and see this is how many people we have, this is how much you can see about their income and this is what is taxable and this is Transparency. what... Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then we still have an issue where the tax to GDP ratio is still an abysmal, is still at an abysmal, you know, situation. Is it really low? Yeah, it's it's low. And when you look at 
when you look at that, you need to dissect it properly and say to yourself that where does the revenue come from? Because when you talk about GDP again, it's about what you get from agriculture, what you get from entertainment, what you get from all sort of sectors within the economy. Services sector. Yeah, so mm. services sector. And you don't see so much of tax collection from all of these places as much as you see from the oil and gas sector. So you find that most of the taxes that is being remitted is actually coming from the oil and gas sector. Well, the current uh, administration of the Federal Land Revenue Service has tried enough to try to match it and see how much tax revenue it's even generated from non-oil activities. And that's the much that we need because we have found that oil is no longer sustainable, so to speak. And so you need to then diversify properly and ensure that all of those sectors of the economy also give their share. Because that's how you then find that this is what the GDP is. This is what we actually produce in-house. For now, we don't produce more than oil. And unfortunately, you find that most of the production from all of those other sectors are not actually giving their own share of taxes. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about how informal those sectors operate. Are they, are, they, are they really in the face of everyone? Everybody knows the oil giants, for example. They know the big oil guys, so they can easily go to them and say, where is your tax pay? But nobody knows the, uh, the, the man in the market or the woman in the market who also makes some revenue. Like I said, back in 1970s when they were using agricultural, pro uh, agricultural products money to, to build the cocoa house and all of those, you find that they used the marketing board to collect that. So there has to be a structure to ensure that everybody pays their own fair share. And again, okay, if you're taxes. going to do that, if you're going to do that, you need to also gain the trust of the people who are going to pay the taxes because people want to operate under the radar because they know that they're not seeing so much of infrastructural development. They are not seeing difference in what the government is using the money for sometimes. That's what the view of people have. But when they begin to realize that there's so much that has been collected has been spent on what it should be spent on, then people will be more willing mm -hmm. to pay their taxes. All right, but on this note, we have a video based on um, small-scale business owners. I'd like us to take a look at it quickly. As a business owner, Nigeria is such an interesting space to play in. The economy is interesting, and I choose my words carefully when I say interesting, because one thing I'm trying to do at this period is to keep the hope alive. It can be discouraging running a business. I'm in food processing, so you have regulatory issues for things that may not necessarily be that way. Processes are cumbersome, you know, to register your business. We can argue that the ease of business, you know, in registering a business name in the CSC, but that's the very, very least thing in, um, as a business owner. That's the, the basic of the basic. As a business owner, you can't play bigger and beyond the macroeconomic space that you're playing in. Nigerian economy is not exactly very palatable in terms of, um, you know, FDIs and investors coming in to invest to grow the economy. We have interesting policies where um, things are banned without adequate local input being sustained. Every sector is crying for help. Every sector. I hope to see a Nigeria that someday we would all be proud of again. Presently, the economic situation of the country is affecting my business negatively, not just positively, it's, neg it's negatively because market is a big door now, the market is a big door, so people are basically looking for money to eat, not to buy shoes for fashion. Of course you can see, um, when the economy, uh, economy of a country is, uh, is not good, even the food you eat, you find it difficult to get it, you understand, just like what we are saying about uh, the closure of the border. I don't think he's asking me is as if it's what you know, so uh, it's affecting us in a negative side of it. You can see people are, are here, nothing like like it used to be. Um, some African countries that used to come and patronize us, they are no longer coming. Most of the African countries like uh, um, 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 what Cameroon, Abidjan people, Ivory Coast, I mean, and some other neighboring countries, they are not coming anymore. So it's affecting us the time. So government should adjust. Let's try and do something. That is my message to the government, both state and federal. 
they should do something that will make the poor, at least make life easy for the poor masses. 59, it's unfortunate to say that we have lost a lot of opportunity. Uh, we have four generations you know, in the workforce today. Looking at those four generations, we can say maybe the first two are the ones that the nation had invested in, and unfortunately, they constitute the minority of the workforce. We need to ensure we don't make the same mistake we have made with the multitude, the millions of graduates that are out there today who are unemployed or underemployed, who are not ready for the market, if we can avoid making or repeating the same mistake that we made with them, with these young children that are in the primary and secondary schools today, maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to realize that potential. Okay, so basically we saw that and it seems like different people have their different opinions, different but then opinions. it looks as though those living in Lagos have a better experience. These taxpayers want to see their taxes working for them. Yeah, obviously. And uh, that's, that's what you see with different people, different uh, people with different, different folks with different, uh, with different yokes, maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, people view it differently. And um, I guess for people who are in paid employment, it's easier for them. I had the opportunity of asking someone just two days ago about whether our organization actually remits our taxes and she said she doesn't really care. They deduct it from me and I don't care whether they remit it or not. Or not. Uh, we don't ask enough questions sometimes as citizens. We don't even query the government. We don't ask our legislators what is being done and how much was collected. It's as good as when you send someone to the market and you say buy this for me and it then comes back and gives you return. The government is actually working for us, and they should be working for us at every time. So when you pay your tax, you should also, number one, get your tax clearance certificate and be sure that it was actually remitted by the person who deducted from your salary. Or if you paid directly, you're also more interested in whether it was used for the right things. And you want to check how much Lagos State government is collecting, for example. What exactly have we seen? In the, in the state, how much did it cost to execute some of the projects that you see? That's the kind of engagement that we need to be having. Unfortunately, there is not so much of uh, awareness. There is not so much of tax education for the people. So not so many people even know what their taxes are meant to to, uh, to, to, to achieve. So they are not asking enough questions. They don't really care whether they pay or not. And some people who pay directly, and that's what you see from that, from that video, that the person who does his own business and pays directly feels the pain more and is asking, oh, what exactly is this being used for? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the real concern that we have. And then, like I said, we need to engage the government the more and say to them, what exactly do you spend this money on? But then Can finally, we have a return? Before, yeah. before we go, as an individual, how would you suggest that I track where my tax is going to? The easiest way, number one, like I said, is to say, where is the tax clearance certificate? For example, when you want to execute some projects in Lagos states, say you want to build a house, one of the requirements is that you should present a tax clearance certificate. And there are other things that you want to do in the state that you also need a tax clearance certificate for. And you need to start asking that question from your employers that where is the tax that you deduct from my salary every month? And that's the place to start from. When you know that you are then making payments, you can ask questions when you get to those offices. There are places you get to some offices where they want to ask for some other things that they, they want to ask for some financial help that ordinarily your taxes paying their, their salaries, for example. Mm -hmm. And then it helps you to stand firm and say, see, the fact that you are being paid here is because I pay my own tax. So it's, it's a pool for, like I said, the recurrent expenditure as well as the capital expenditure. And that uh, recurrent expenditure is most of the time salaries of government officials. And so they don't have any need to ask us for extra money for doing work for us. Again, when you then look at 
the capital expenditure, you're checking the road to your house and you're saying what exactly, if there are people to engage, if there is a senator, if there is a legislator who will represent that district, you should be asking them the what exactly, the local to start government with. chairman to, to even start with, what exactly are this money is being used for? All right, thank you so much, Timitokwe, for joining me. It's always a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you so much. It's my delight. Thank and you. And happy Independence Day once <laughs> happy again. Happy Independence Day. All right, you're still watching Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back right after this break.